In January 2023, I made a video talking about artificial intelligence and product management. And almost exactly two years later, I want to share with you some of my updated views because let me tell you, especially in recent months, I have done almost a full 180 degree flip on how I'm feeling about artificial intelligence and the world of product. And if I'm being really honest, I have gotten a little bit nervous given the speed and pace at which some of these AI tools and technologies are moving. It's forced me to really assess how I stay relevant, how I don't become irrelevant, how I can continue to evolve and adapt and just not get left behind. So whether you are an existing experienced product manager or you are an aspiring product manager, you might even be a designer or a software engineer someone working in the corporate or tech world, this video is gonna be relevant for you. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five common product manager tasks or roles that you probably do on a daily or weekly basis. And I'm gonna be talking about how artificial intelligence is changing, improving, upgrading, replacing these tasks, but rather than us getting nervous about it, and afraid of it, how we can lean into it and how we can optimize for building really cool products with this, how we can work on more interesting problems, how we can avoid doing mundane repetitive work, how we can craft new skills that actually benefit us in this new landscape of AI. And perhaps most importantly, how we can actually build way better products for customers. Number one is we are going from presentations to prototyping. Now, no matter what level you are at in your product career, no matter how big or small your product portfolio, chances are that you have probably contributed to or delivered some kind of presentation. This could be to internal stakeholders, it could be to your design and engineering counterparts, it could be to customers. You could be sharing a product roadmap for the next two to three quarters. You could be doing a literal demo of a product to sales or a customer. You could be sharing updates on product metrics and adoption. You might even be presenting research around the market and competitors. Basically, the scope and the audience is wide and varied. Now, traditionally, product managers have relied on static slide decks to communicate such information. But here is where AI is changing the game, especially when it comes to conveying the idea for a new product solution or solving a customer problem in a certain way. Now imagine walking into a stakeholder meeting, completely ditching that slide deck, walking in with whatever AI tool you choose to partner with you and either creating, let's say a real time strategy map based on the feedback this um, stakeholder is giving you actually evolving that strategy in real time. Then also seeing how that strategy might reflect in a, uh, a real uh, interactive product. So rather than just showing static mockups and designs or an interactive clickable high fidelity design, actually being able to, again, tweak and um, customize a real, a semi-functional MVP that probably took you 30 minutes to spin up. When the stakeholder asks you why you are not prioritizing feature X over feature Y, you could plug that into your real-time strategy map and see what the outcome would be or what the output would be. You could plug in other variables that maybe you haven't thought about that they have suggested. And it, everything becomes a lot more collaborative rather than you doing a whole bunch of prep work, going into some kind of meeting or presentation and then sharing some static information, getting that feedback, going away, reworking it and letting the cycle repeat. This can really turn dull presentations with static information into dynamic conversations where you can actually not just talk about the strategy, but show it live in action based on real-time feedback. With the next presentation you have to ditch the typical slide and try and go into that with an AI tool as your superpower assistant. See if you can use that AI tool to allow you to then do better storytelling in real time based on real time feedback, rather than just talking over slides that you prepared a week earlier. Number two, from design mockups to adaptive product simulations. Now, design collaboration has always been a incredibly important part of product management. And, you know, to some extent, I don't think that will ever truly go away. Even if the capacity in which we work with the designer changes, we still need to think about user experience, user interaction, user flows, user psychology, and, and even user behavior when it comes to how they will use and interact with 
our product. What is changing as we speak, and I believe will continue to evolve, is not spending weeks on wireframes, not spending weeks on translating requirements from product to design, and not spending weeks on mock-ups. So there's two things I've seen here that AI really helps with. One, it's doing really quick, rough sketches and very rough wireframes, and then giving it to the right AI tool to take it to the next level. So you're not spending a lot of time on those wireframes, you're really just getting the concept out and then collaborating with the AI tool to take it to the next level. Again, just shortening down that time. But secondly, something that I haven't seen as much of, but I'm really eager to explore it in my current role at the moment, is how an AI tool can actually generate entire user flows, entire user journeys, entire user experience based on a custom set of user characteristics or demographics. So basically almost like A-B testing, giving an AI tool the task to create two versions of a product's UI based on two different customer segments or customer personas. And then seeing how that AI tool adapts to those personas in real time. The other thing this allows you to do is to test assumptions on the fly rather than spending weeks with creating wireframes and mockups, then getting in touch with users to get their feedback. Yes, you'll still need to get in touch with users for feedback, but you can iterate through the first step of that or first couple of steps really, really quickly. And while I think it will take some time for the relationship and collaboration between a product manager and a product designer to fundamentally change, I do think that that relationship will become even more collaborative. Because yes, you could argue that the product designer or the product manager individually could just go through the entire design process independently in collaboration with the AI tool. Yes, they absolutely could, but I think this is an example of where I think it's really useful and meaningful to bounce ideas and soundboard with another human being who brings their own experience and lens to something. So I don't think suddenly product and design aren't going to collaborate. Maybe that is something we will see less and less of over time. But for now, I think we will both work together with these AI tools to share our ideas and iterate in real time based on the the various requirements that we might have about or around our user base. In this case, you as a product manager are no longer just approving a design or just giving one way feedback on a design to a product designer. You are involved and deeply collaborating with that designer to create a rich, dynamic, very user-centric experience, quite possibly end-to-end. You don't need to be just involved in that one part of it where it's like, yes, looks good, let's pass it on to development. Number three is going from product requirements to product blueprint. Now, when I say product blueprint, I really mean we are going away as product managers from just focusing on writing functional product requirements, translating those into requirements that go into JIRA for developers, and focusing on the bigger, fuller picture that a successful product that you wanna take to market requires. So first and foremost, if you are not already leveraging AI to your maximum ability, when it comes to writing requirements, you need to pause this video and you need to go and figure out how to do that. Hint, it's very easy, use ChatGPT. Secondly, if you're still writing JIRA tickets for developers, also go and figure out why you're still doing that because you should be definitely leveraging an AI tool to do that. Now. Let's say you're saving 30% of your week, depending on your product portfolio scope, depending on your level, your experience, your team, all of that stuff. Let's just say you're saving a shit ton more time because you're not sitting there thinking of what this product should do, how it should do it, then writing that and translating it for designers and developers, right? You're saving a lot of time. So what is the next best thing that you could be doing with that time? So there's many things you could obviously be doing, but one of the things I recommend is you could think of playing out different scenarios that could happen as an input to your requirements. So let's say we know what product we wanna build. The, the what for those features and capabilities of that product, that's usually the easy stuff, right? But something we haven't been able to easily do in the past, apart from without a lot of research, is okay, what if external factors change? How would my requirements change? So let's say if I were to change the pricing of my product from A to B, does it still make sense to have these requirements packaged as they are? Uh, What if, you know, something happens in the market that we are playing in? Let's say there's a big disruption. 
do these requirements still make sense? What are competitors doing? Do these requirements still make sense in the lens of what our competitors are doing and what they're about to come up with? Another good one is you don't want to acquire a whole lot of new customers, but you want to focus on retention of existing customers. Are these the most optimal set of features in this product for you to do that? So I think you can be still very involved as a product manager when it comes to writing requirements, but just in a different way, asking challenging questions, uh, questioning whether this makes sense and working with the AI tool to do the research for you, right? At the end of the day, this is like, you have access to so much more information readily available for you more than ever before at your fingertips, but you don't have to sift through that information manually yourself. So think about how you can leverage that genius that is at your fingertips to make a better decision about what your product requirements are. And then when it comes to blueprint, I'm just using that word to talk about having a plan, but then, you know, not just having a set of requirements that you're just giving to engineering and to design and other cross-functional partners, but packaging up those requirements in a way that like a commercial proposal in a way, think about how you want to hand those requirements out to sales, to marketing, to other business stakeholders, even packaging it up in a way to present to some customers for early feedback. So think about that whole end-to-end -end blueprint because you can actually whip up all of that stuff so quickly now because you're saving so much more time by not having to write, this button should do this, log out, export, you know, those really mundane things that a product should do. Number four I'm very excited about is from dashboards to conversational insights. Now dashboards are great, visuals are great, anything that shows you the picture of how your product is going, its adoption, its usage, trends and spikes and troughs, like it's all great to see because it gives you a lot of insight into customer behavior. But it's also really easy to get lost in one creating dashboards figuring out the data behind them. And, and again, just that sort of interpreting that data. So the way this is changing, and I think this is fantastic, is instead of having to log into a dashboard, maybe it's Datadog, maybe it's Google Data Studio, which is the one I've commonly used, instead of logging into those tools on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and interpreting data, and quite honestly, probably having some heated discussions and disagreements with other people and how they are interpreting the data, Imagine just logging in and asking a in a conversational way, hey, we just launched feature X. Tell me about the engagement this feature is getting in the last seven days. Oh, okay, I see there was a big uptake on day four. Correlate this with this other data set to understand if this big spike in uptake was because of this other thing, so on and so forth. I'm coming up, I'm spitballing here, but you get the idea. Getting a conversational response in real time to a question you have, your team has, a stakeholder has, and being able to confidently, because assuming this is accurate, being able to confidently answer a question based on data in any given meeting or conversation or situation you are in is extremely powerful. And I think this can really change the way in which sometimes product work can be quite reactive to extremely proactive because it's just so much easier to access and interpret that data. You know that data-driven decision-making is a big thing in product, if you have the data available, of course, but sometimes I believe there is still a barrier to interpreting that data, to um, setting up the right tools and dashboards and queries and databases, making sure it's up to date. It's, it's a lot of work and it's not uncommon for companies to have teams that are dedicated to this sort of thing. So, so something you can do here for yourself is if you are a product manager who, you know, frequently has to deal with interpreting data for your products, which I mean, all of us should be, then think about or explore uh, if there are some AI tools that you could use and, you know, work with your company, of course, don't just put confidential product information and especially customer information into an AI tool, but think about maybe how you could spearhead that uh, for your company. And I think this is gonna be extremely useful. And I think it's also very similar to how customers can now talk to conversational bots to find out information about a product rather than sifting through help center documents. It's the same sort of thing. You're getting that knowledge way quicker, way faster through 
what feels like a human conversation. Okay, number five, from backlogs to AI powered prioritization. This is one we have all faced, the never ending challenge of what to do next, what is most important, often juggling lots of different perspectives, different viewpoints. Everything seems important, nothing seems important, you never have enough resources. We know how it goes. Every customer thinks their problem is the biggest. Now, I haven't seen this played out in action in any of the places I have worked, but I think there is an opportunity to use AI as your companion to help prioritize your backlog with a lot of different factors that might be difficult for you to otherwise consider. So I'm talking about customer feedback, business goals, technical constraints, developer capacity maybe even market insight. Getting your AI to feed in all of those different data sources and then getting it to make a priority decision based on all of that. Whereas on your own, you are, I mean, you should always use a bit of judgment. I don't think there is anything wrong with that, but there's only so much you can do manually and by yourself as a human being to analyze all of the factors that go into, okay, what is actually the best decision here? Now, the next step from this is rather than just having an AI tool do prioritization for you, get it to simulate different versions of that prioritization. This is where I think prioritization conversations will now go. Rather than spending your time with your engineering team going line by line as to what should we prioritize, you can actually just look at okay, this is one version of the prioritization and by doing this, we will achieve X, Y, Z or this is the output we will get and then having another version and another version and maybe actually focusing on the difference in the output you will get or the outcome you will get rather than actually prioritizing line by line and discussing that as a team. From there, you could even simulate different roadmaps. So if we were to take version two of this prioritization, what does our roadmap look like in two months? What if we did version one? What does our roadmap look like then in two months? It will allow you to simulate what the future looks like a lot better than, again, if you were going to try and do that manually yourself. This may also help to juggle when people have different views and opinions. So if someone throws a obscure viewpoint into the mix as to why you should or shouldn't prioritize something, you can again tell the AI to factor that in. And yeah, it might make some of those conversations a little bit more factual and easier to have or navigate. Okay, so those are the five common tasks that a product manager does on a daily, weekly, or very frequently basis that AI is revolutionizing and, and how you can really lean into those things. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you got this far, I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in my next video.